Who kills more babies? I'm a I'm back. And I'm back on the KTM 1390R Super Duke Evo Beast. Today I'm checking out the uh, community ability, the everyday ability of the bad orange beast. And uh, I'm doing a quick cruise into, into the city. And I'm in super race mode. Well, race mode. I've renamed it Super Super Race Mode because it is just super duper uh, and uh, look at me, second gear, 27 k's an hour smooth as you like, this thing is so smooth um, honestly it is ridiculous for such a big twin the down low manners are unreal as is the uh, quick shifter, by the way, when you when you're doing those short, blippy, low speed uh, kind of actions, uh, it's just nice and slick. When you're kind of just you know looping like this, and you're kind of cruising and, and you're using it, it's a bit clunkier. But as long as you're a little bit of throttle opening, look at that, boom, really, really good. So um, today's the commuter test. It's my short commute into the city. Ah, which involves a fair bit of uh, traffic, bus action, bus lanes, cycles, cycle lanes, bridges, queues, all the usual things you would find on an inner city urban commute. And I want to see how this big girl handles it. First thing I'll say is the height of the bike is awesome. So the visibility I've got over those cars is um, splendid. And uh, it is a tall bike, right? So if you're a short ass, you will possibly be challenged. I get both feet flat, I'm six foot four. So for me, traffic lights are not an intimidating proposition. I have a couple of very short ass mates who would uh, find this frightening at the lights, uh, but not, not for me, as I can prove right now. And as you can see, lane filterability, not a problem though, but the looks of it, we'll get to test that out extensively uh, on this on this ride so um this is my daily grind i'm gonna head up through the uh, northern beaches into the city of sydney and so lane filterability um the the bars aren't too wide so they're wide enough that you get a good uh good leverage in the in the twisties but not so wide that you have any issues with this sort of terrain as you can see um, no problem. No problem at all. Now it gets a little bit more challenging when you've got a crane on the back of a truck. Um, but uh, for most urban scenarios, lane filterability is excellent. The bike does not get too hot. You know, when you're doing this sort of choppy stuff, um, unlike the Tuono, which absolutely shat itself in these conditions, the bike does not get too hot, and that is important. Right, let me just let me just uh, now visibility. You know, moving your body around on this big thing, easy peasy. Uh, and away we go. So now easy peasy. I do have a very heavy backpack on today. I got lots of crap in there, including computer. And um, you know, obviously, there's not a whole lot of luggage on this bike, well there's none, uh, so that is a slight minus for commuter ability but of course you can set it up uh, with, with bags, but I've got a very heavy backpack on today, which is a right royal pain, uh, and this is real peak hour, this is as grindy as it gets, one negative for commuter ability that I can highlight immediately is this clutch is quite heavy, for these conditions when you're just cruising real slow in essentially a car park, uh, it is quite heavy. That is one to watch. Um, that is a definitely a, a negative from the commuter ability. But I must say, most of the time, I'm not in quite this severe conditions. I don't normally tackle the major peak hour rush. Um, but the, if you do, that clutch can get a little heavy. Here we go. Now, road presence is a uh, fairly substantial issue for commuting and. This bike's got plenty because of its height and its colour. 
So I think when, it, when you glance in the rear view mirror, you're going to see a large shape coming at you that's bright. So I think it's, you know, the black one I would have a very different view, but the orange one bright as, but big and tall. So I think road presence is good, although the sound, it's very quiet. I've got the um, Euro 4 Acura on it. Looks sick, but it's not the loudest. Uh, not, well, not at these speeds, not at, um, you know, 3,000 RPM at these speeds. So it's not a loud bike, so I don't think you're relying on being heard as much. But it's certainly got, you know, it takes up reasonable space. It's high. Um, it's kind of whitish, so you, you've got good good road, pre road presence. On the beasts, now my number one criterion for commuting is um, can you have fun on the commute? <laughs> and yes, and yes, you can. The slightest twist of the throttle in this thing, you have fun. It's so cool. So cool. Now I've got it in uh, in uh, track mode, track throttle mode, which I, I think is the wrong name. I think it's misleading to call it the track mode. It really is the daily commuter mode. It's the mode you want this bike in when you are doing the daily commute. There's no two ways about it. Um, you want to have fun in commuter situations. I'm not the rider who's just going to go A to B on a bike and go, oh, I got there and not think about the journey. The journey is everything, and being able to have a little bit of fun at the slightest throttle opening in mega maniacal track mode is absolutely what's required on a commute. There is no point putting this in road or urban mode on a commute, none. I mean, I think that's there for the marketing brochures, perhaps, you know, I've got all this different, you know, all these different electronic setups, but the reality is you get on a motorbike because you're going to have fun. And I'll look at this, My, the throttle actually is the is the main sort of um, electronic mode selector on this bike. Look at me, I'm at second gear, 45 k's an hour, in traffic, cruising like a nanny, no problem. Smooth as you like, but the slightest little twist of the throttle, and I'm having fun, even at these speeds and these conditions. And that is why I'm renaming track mode, commuter mode. Daily commuter road mode, that's what it is. I might uh, make that suggestion. I'll send it to the product managers at KDM, see if they buy it. Something tells me they uh, they will not. But they will understand what I'm getting at. It's for sure. Now, I find the range in this, like with commuting, you don't want to be stopping all the time at gas stations, right? You want a tank to last you the week on the commute, and it, and it does. Like, I find the range on this really, really good, actually. Um, so, no complaints there. Uh, its range is better than most of the hyper super bikes that I've, that I've owned. So, I've got no complaints about, about the range with the commute. Now, if you're doing a long commute, you know, and you're doing that every day, you might end up filling up once or maybe twice a week if you're a long commute. But, look, I mean, the range is the factor, and the range for a you know, sports bike, it's pretty good. I'm getting, I'm getting well over 200 k's per tank on this. I'll have to check the exact mileage, but it's not like the um, the Tuono or other other bikes I've owned. Like even the Street Fighter, that they are pretty thirsty, and you're stopping a lot. You're not stopping that much on this. I have to say. Yeah, so I've been in the stop-start traffic now for, you know. 20 minutes, 25 minutes, whatever, and I'm not noticing any heat from the bike, and it's a reasonably warm day. Just no, no, no heat factor at all. The bike is not showing any signs of suffering from heat. Happy days in the Australian summer. That's going to be awesome. Um, take note, Aprilia Tuono. I just will never ever buy an Aprilia again until I've got a guarantee that sort of that problem out because it was it ruined that bike, completely ruined it. Didn't want to ride it. Took a look at it in the garage and oh, no, I'm not that because of its overheating problem. Go check out my videos on it. Just shat itself every single traffic light. I think turned itself off. Hated it. With a passion. Hated the dealer too. With a passion. Well, I can't get over how good the low speed manners and um, 
transmission are on this bike. It makes it such an accessible machine. And look, it's quite light and nimble too. So um, for the maneuverability, the maneuverability, try and say that one fast, maneuverability, um, at, uh, at these kind of nothing bollock speeds, very impressive indeed. Makes it an awesome scalpel for commuting. Hello me, hello, hello. Oh, the throttle's wicked. Because <laughs> with commuting, sometimes you do get stuck in little ruts where you're just, you know, doing zero. And then just boom, a little opening and you get your jollies and your loving life again. And that is the key to this machine on the commute. It's its ability to have fun. The Tuono was good like that too, except for it's overheating. Um, but this is better. This is next level in terms of just kind of bang for buck in terms of the throttle openings. And it's not ridiculously violent like the 1290 was. It, it's smoother. The throttle response is definitely smoother. And I've got it in ultra beast track commuter mode. Oh yeah, it feels good. I've, I've actually adjusted my suspension. Um, one of my commuters gave me some settings, which I've dialed in. Does feel good. Lifted the rear a bit. Does feel good. I've got the rear on 55%. Um, it does uh, does feel good actually. I feel good. All right. So is this bike a um, a commuter? This bike is an amazing commuter. This is an absolute magnificent. This is right up there. Excuse me. This is right up there with. Uh, all the commuter bikes you know the sports bikes are narrow but they're uncomfortable this is narrow enough and it's super comfortable the, the the riding position and seating and suspension setup for this machine for this type of urban warfare is outstanding uh i could commute on this for a long long way uh, every day no problem at all it's a great commuter bike um it's only negative really is the heavy clutch and I do, it is prone to stalling, which I haven't been able to demonstrate today. But it is prone to stalling, which is mainly just user error, getting used to the relationship between the transmission, the clutch and the, and the throttle. Um, but I, I am known to stall this machine more than others in these conditions. Finding neutral is easy. Um, so look, really the only negatives from a commuter are the slightly heavy clutch if, you, if you're clutching in and out all day, and um, the you know, stall ability, but that, that again is just user error. So um, look, an absolutely outstanding commuter bike, really is. Doesn't have the tech of, say, the Pikes Peak, you know, with the active uh, cruise and the, and the lane detect lane, what do you call it, detection radar thingy, majingamy. Um, but look, I still rate this as a better urban commuter bike than the Pikes Peak because it's smaller in its physical shape, so more lane for durability and so on and so forth. Oh, th this is an outstanding commuter bike. If you want this as a daily rider, oh, there are some big hyper bikes that are problematic as daily riders. This is not. This is awesome. You can ride this like it's a 600cc bike. Like it, this is awesome for commuting. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Put some bags on it, and uh, I reckon you, you can commute long distance, no sweat. I don't intend to, by the way, because this is my commute into the city. It's short. Piece of cake. And I love the ability just to punch through I don't like being in uh, blind spots, especially when there's multi-lane and choices to make as drivers. So I'm like to punch the gaps, and I was in third gear then at low RPM. Boom, back, no problem. So this bike's made for babies. It's perfect for it, like that punch ability, lane, lane changer ability, you know, and uh, evasion ability, which of course on the commute is something you need to be doing all the time. You know, quick adjustments, boom, boom, on the fly, no props. No props!
and we've had some beautiful spring weather here in Sydney recently, just starting to get cloudy today. We'll take you over the Sydney Harbour Bridge for a little bit of a, a look-see, bit of a tourist peak in a peak hour here in the, uh, the wonderful city of Sydney. Our mirrors are great, by the way, which is important for commuting for obvious reasons. They don't, they don't vibrate like the BMWs. They, they are usable, and so very happy with that. And uh, the riding position gives you physical visibility as well. Feels stable, man. Feels so stable. Feels way more stable than the big Pikes Peak. The Pikes Peak's quite a twitchy bike. This feels at these low speeds, you know, in these conditions, or any conditions really, so stable. It's got a great blend between agility and stability, because sometimes a really agile bike is less less stable, it's more twitchy. This has got this has got a great balance between being stable in a straight line and mid-corner, but also having you know fast turning. Love that, love that. Here we are, the Sydney Harbour Bridge Babies. On a Tuesday morning peak hour, run into the city. Now, I'm going to introduce a new criterion, a set of criterion, uh, and that is the, the, the perfect bike criterion. Exodus is going to have a, like a quality accreditation for bikes that are perfect. And I, I've never given the perfect bike award to a bike yet. I'm going to start assessing my bikes against the, the perfect bike criterion. And bikes have got to be 9 out of 10. They've got to score 9 out of 10 on average in the criterion categories to be the perfect bike, okay? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finally assess this beast against that criterion very, very shortly to see whether or not it can be crowned as the perfect bike. And I've been searching for years. For nearly 15 years I've been searching for the perfect bike, babies. And I'm yet to award a bike that status. How will the KCM 1390 Super Duke R Evo stack up in the perfect bike stakes? Stay tuned, this video is coming. They're going to answer that question. And one of the criteria is what Ali from the car park thinks. Okay, and we're about to find out what he thinks of the uh, the Orange Beast very shortly now he is a generous marker he does give out a lot of tens <laughs> so he's not the most difficult man to impress and he is filipino and filipinos love two wheels so um it may be slight bias going on there but let's see let's see what ali's got to say my filipino maestro here he is the big man, the Filipino maestro. You like this one? You like this one? Great color, eh? What do you give it out of 10? 10. There you go, 10 out of 10. I thought that might happen. You heard it here first. Good, isn't it? That's all I've got for you. See you later. <laughs> you love it, don't you? It's good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's back up. 10 out of 10, you legend. There you go. Well, it's part of the first test. 